I'm here with the First Lady of Racing, Gay Waterhouse, and her co-trainer, Adrian Bott, who together are facing the very serious charge that they substituted not one, but three horses at Breakfast with the Stars track work during the Sydney Autumn Championships. Gay, if I can start with you first. Did you substitute three horses at official track work? <laughs> Oh, damn golden slippers. <laughs> so, Gay, did you substitute three horses at track work without notifying the students? I can't believe the stewards called us in to answer to those charges. I find it so totally unacceptable, so incredibly severe, unnecessary and certainly unfair. Gay, can you please stop shouting from the rooftops? The stewards can hear your character assassination of them perfectly well from down here. Now please, come on back down and answer my questions. Oh, very well. So, Gay, did you or did you not substitute three horses at track work? Don't you look at me with that tone of voice, young man. I take great exception to that word substitution because it suggests something sinister. It suggests that we were out to deceive people. Weren't you? Absolutely not. Well, let's be clear here, Gay. Only horses that were entered to race in the championships were eligible to take part in official track work. You had three registered horses, but instead you sent out three different horses, three ineligible horses. What's worse, you sent them out under the names of those three registered horses and with the jockeys wearing the colours of those registered horses. All of this without making any notification to the stewards. Gay, surely that's the very art of deception. Well, you didn't set out to deceive anybody. The horses weren't even working that fast because the track was so wet. Yep, but isn't that part of the problem, Gay? One of the horses that you substituted out was your superstar sprinter, English. You sent out a different horse with a jockey wearing English's colours. You led track watchers to believe that they were watching your fastest horse, but they were in fact watching a slower horse. Yes, but nobody was betting on it. Well, not on track work, no. But they were betting on English's race during the championships a few days later. And if track watchers thought she was performing poorly at track work, then that would artificially inflate her odds come race day. Look, we were just trying to put on a good show for the racing public. I know all about show business, you know, I am a thespian. I, I said thespian. I am racing's greatest promoter. I am the greatest. Adrian, do you have anything to say about this matter? It seems quite evident that both yourself and Gay deliberately set out to deceive both the stewards and the punters. Gay, do we have a problem with integrity in racing in this country? We've had leading jockeys banned for betting on horses that they are riding against. We've had leading trainers banned for using prohibited substances. We've had a licensed vet banned for providing those prohibited substances. We've had a high profile racing media figure deliberately cheat his fellow owners out of the proceeds of sale. We have unregulated price gouging at horse sales and syndications. The list goes on. Yet it seems every time that the stewards impose a penalty, our leading trainers and jockeys bleak to high heavens until that penalty is overturned on appeal due to some technicality. And then the character assassination begins. We've even had a steward shot at in his own home. Gay, as the latest in a long line of racing figures to have breached the rules of racing, don't you think it would be best to stand up and accept responsibility for your own actions? You guys just swapped clothes. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. Gee, it's hard to get a straight answer. I'm beginning to understand how the stewards must feel. Gay, can you at least give the racing faithful an assurance that this will never happen again? That the next time English steps out on the track, it will in fact be English. Right now. So there you have it folks, straight from the horse's mouth. There's nothing to see here. Thanks Gay for the interview. Uh, all the best with the hearing. I hope it goes okay for you. I mean honestly, how was I supposed to know I was supposed to notify the steward? I I didn't even know there was anything wrong with substituting a horse. Gay, remind me again, when you first applied for your trainer's licence many years ago, why did the racing authorities deny you that licence for several years? Um, my husband's been banned for life from racing. What for? Uh, from substituting a horse. Uh, 
Oh yes, I forgot about that.